Hi, Cizrin here with another video and today we are going to be reviewing Undecember. Before we do that, there's quite a lot I have to say before we start. First off, this is not a sponsored video. However, the company has paid me money to stream two hours of the game. I feel like that's still important to disclose as most people's judgment is changed by money. I was sponsored for two hours. I've now played the game for 24 hours. Now, this is not necessarily enough to review the game, but I also don't really want to play much more. I've sort of seen enough. I think we start with the good things about the game and then we move on to the cons. So this is a mobile game. It is a crossplay game and it doesn't feel mobile. I recently also played Torchlight, which is also a crossplay game that felt a lot more mobile. This just feels like, like if this didn't have a mobile version and was just designed for PC, I'd be like, yeah, I see that. The gem system is pretty interesting. This is the gem system. It's quite interesting. It's basically the PUE2 linking system where gems are not tied to gear and gems themselves have sockets. And this is basically, yeah, this is basically the PUE2 system. Uh, so you basically can try that out already. And so here you can see my skill is Flamethrower. This is four link or four socketed, which is kind of the same as being five socketed in PUE because I have four support gems. So at the moment, I've linked additional fire damage, area effect, spell activation while channeling, channeling, enhancement. And that is linked to a five link lightning chain, which is linked with confidence, which is damage on full life support, additional lightning damage, spell damage, chain impact, and, and uh, the use count is linked to teleport. Then I have a separate meteor, which is like a new KU some bosses with some like ignite damage things. And then you have two skill bars you can use. I shoot fire out of my hands and that fire triggers lightning. And then I also have a big meteor for loads of singletary that I use on bosses. I have teleport. I have like sort of like a decoy totem or I don't know, it like debuffs. I have like a buff. And then I have like a frost shield aura. That is one of the upsides of it being designed for mobile is the fact that it runs on your phone means that it runs extremely smooth on your PC. So had no issues, no bugs, just been very, very smooth, high FPS the entire time. Crafting seems really interesting. It's very, very similar to PoE, a little bit more targeted. So this is now, it's like, this is similar to alterations in Path of Exile. Sorry if I'm using a lot of PoE terms, but I'm assuming that a lot of my audience is PoE players, or at least are aware of PoE. So now I'm using this orb until I get three stats, and then I can reveal the third stat, and let's say that this was a really, really good item. It isn't. Now that I have three stats on it, I can reroll the item using this. Okay, there. Select option. So now this is similar to Essences in Path of Exile. This will guarantee one stat. Um, so L1 kill XP. And then the others are random. Hit rate is accuracy, which also works for spells in this. Let's say I want this. And I can turn it into a rare item. Um, and I can use this to basically just reroll the entire item. Endgame is supposed to be very, very similar to maps in Path of Exile. And I heard really good things about it. The boss fights are really, really, really cool and interesting. They are a lot harder than Path of Exile. Maybe Scry can have some videos in the background of me fighting or dying to bosses. <gasps> oh! oh no! I didn't think the damage would scale that hard. They're very, very cool. There's like quite a lot of abilities. There's a lot of dodging. Very different from PoE. So I got to give them praise for that. The game comes with a free gem tab, basically. So you can store every gem you find or every skill you find here. And something I really want to praise the game for. You have a literal YouTube play button that has a preview of every single skill in the game. This is actually really good. I wish PoE had this. It's great. Now, I wasn't sure whether to put this in the pros, but I, I guess it is a pro. You can earn rubies, which is probably a lot of you are familiar with. Like Some games will have two currencies. There's one that's earnable by playing the game or selling things to other players. That's also buyable for real money. And then there's one that's only buyable for real money. So there are some things you can access in the game by just playing it and selling to other players. Like for example, you can buy the auto looting pet by selling things to other players. And this is pretty much where the good part ends. The game itself, I have very little negative to say. It's very mild in a way. 
it's basically copying a lot of good things from Path of Exile, Diablo 3, Last Epoch. It's kind of hard to go wrong. They aren't reinventing the wheel. Like I said, like this is the PoE 2 gem system, pretty much one-to-one. -one, and they aren't really reinventing anything. It's a lot of clever ideas in a really cool way. And honestly, it's a pretty enjoyable game. Are you ready for the cons? Where do I start? So it starts getting pretty rough using zero dollars after 10 to 15 hours. You already start feeling that your stash is really, really rough. You can create mules to alleviate this, but a lot of the players who were defending it a lot in the game says that you, like Path of Exile, will pretty early want to use the cash shop and buy the uh, stash tabs. So to give you an idea of how much things are, uh, it's basically... This is in pound, but it's basically 44 diamonds for $1. And then um, one diamond is one ruby. So 44 diamonds to $1. So that means that the essence storage, which is basically all your crafting currency, is uh, $15 or $16. And then a normal one is like $12 or $13. Now, this one is really, really important. At the moment, if I want to craft, I have to pull the currency out of my tab, have it in my inventory, and then talk to the vendor. If you have that tab, you don't need to do that. So it's a very, very like, it really, honestly, everything about this game is like, please spend money. That alone, the stash tabs, I would not have a problem with. It would be a massive, massively hypocritical of me to have a problem with that. Before I get into this, because I am a very harsh person on pay to win, and I would like to talk a little bit about how, how I view pay to win and, and more importantly, I, I don't want to call it pay to win because what happens then is people will attack the definition and they will ask me, well, Zizrin, what are you winning? So let me make it absolutely crystal clear. I do not like when money changes the experience in a game. So that means that I put Path of Exile, League of Legends, Warframe, even Dota 2 on a 0 0.5 out of 10 pay to win. If it changes the experience whatsoever, it goes on the scale. I am very extremely harsh towards pay to win. Uh, and I will always be that way, hopefully. I I think it's gone way too far in gaming. And I would rather be way harsh than too mild. It's completely okay if you are okay with it, by the way. This is just how I feel. And yes, of course, Path of Exile is pay to win. For those that feel like that is a big gotcha or something. How does this game compare to Diablo Immortal? not great to compare any game to Diablo Immortal because, you know, pretty much anything is better. That's like the most insane monetization and most predatory thing I've ever seen. And it, it isn't like that level. I would compare this more to Lost Ark or Warframe. And I'm, I'm not a huge fan of the monetization in those games either. But a lot of people don't feel like they need to spend money in either of those games. I just don't like the option being there at all. It shouldn't be there. I would probably put it at a six or a 7 out of 10 pay to win. Now, personally, the way I look at this, if a game is trying to get 40, even a hundred dollars out of me, and that is the peak of everything that changes in the game experience wise, gameplay wise, I don't care about cosmetics. I think that's the best way to monetize. Then I'm OK with it. For example, in Path of Exile, if you spend $50 on the game or 2000, is there a big difference in experience? No, there isn't. It's purely cosmetic. Whereas if the answer is yes, then that's a big red flag for me. And in that, in this game, there is a yes to that. There's a lot you can spend money on outside of the stash tabs. Because if it was just the stash tabs, I would easily invest $100 in this game. I would buy cosmetics and I would praise the shit out of it because it's a pretty decent game. But the monetization is very bad. Let's talk about something I just found out today. Bag space. You can buy five additional bag space for 100 coins. So that means that for a total of $68, I can max out my inventory to 250. This is also per character. People have said that this is not a alt heavy game like Lost Ark, but if you do want to have multiple characters, you do again have to spend $68 if you want to max your inventory. Stash tabs in the game are between $13 and $15. It's a little bit more expensive than Path of Exile, but that in itself is pretty okay, I feel. Max character slots is three, and if you want to pay more, it's 
ten dollars per slot. Um, there are auto looting pets for you. They can also be sent back uh, to disenchant or vendor items for you while you are mapping uh, with a 10 minute cooldown. You cannot buy these. You only rent them. You can never buy them. These can also be bought with in-game currency, but obviously somebody does have to buy that too. So the auto looting pets is $3 per week. Um, there is an auction house where you can use real life money to buy gear off other players. So for example, you could, if you're a rich person, drop a thousand or 10,000 or a hundred thousand dollars and buy probably whatever you want on the auction house from other players. You only have three auction house spots. However, you can rent an additional two for $2 every week. And they do have a bundle where you can buy uh, the auction house slots and the pet uh, for, for like a small discount. There's also paid resurrection scrolls. You can only craft a few of these per day as a free to play player, but you can buy them for money. And in the campaign, you can do these infinitely. If you resurrect normally, the fight starts completely over again. If you use the resurrection scroll, you pick back off where you left. Now, I have been told that the end game, the, these are max two or three. So it doesn't seem like a big deal at the end game, but yeah. I almost forgot to talk about my single least favorite thing for the game and also i forgot to mention it also has a battle pass on top of everything else um i have never had to click and collect so many things and you can disable notification and there's quite a lot of things you can click collect all on but for example you know there are daily login rewards you'll log in and you'll be like ding click that and then there's total play time awards then there's the fast event and i had to click this like three different times today and they'll like pop up with like there's more things you can collect um then you have to click this every day um this is an act achievement pass that you will get what are these even for oh this is to level up your gems your gems have to be manually leveled um that's a kind of neat system but uh this is a uh, gem xp so you can level up your gems easier this is nine bucks and then there is another battle pass this is a premium battle pass where the first one gives you pretty infrequent things, uh, which are decent. And then if you buy the premium battle pass, you get a lot more rune growth material, damage orb, a lot of extra things. And on top of that, there are daily missions. And if you were thinking like, wow, that is a lot of notifications and things to click, that is not it. There's more. Um, here, you will have to like click through all of these several times a day. You will have to click through this several times a day and do things like this. It does have a receive all button. You can receive all. You can turn off that notification. This is honestly one of my least favorite things about the game. And those are all fairly important things to collect. Things to like use jewelry, fusings, chromes, etc. on your items. Very exhaustive to do so much clicking. And you have to check your mailbox to see if you received anything. Crafting timers. So there's quite a lot of interesting crafting at the alchemy desk. You can smash potions together. You can upgrade essences. You can um, try to craft, smash multiple runes together to get rarer ones. And you can only do one at a time. Some of the crafts can be 20 minutes to so like start a craft, go mapping for a bit, then come back and pick it up. Um, however, you can buy more slots. And this is $10 per slot. And then you can do um, multiple. However, you could also instantaneously finish the craft by paying for it. This brings me to one of my points about why I'm so against heavy monetization like this in video games. A lot of people will use the excuse, well, Zizarin, what are you winning? Well, if I'm just playing for myself, nobody else, like, it doesn't affect me, right? What other people do, it's okay. Well, I don't care about being on the ladder. Loads of excuses like that. The fact that this exists, the speeding up, the multiple slots, if this was a $40 game or a $60 game, the timer here would not exist. It would be instant or faster. There would probably be all the slots by default. The problem I have with all these things is that the game developer is incentivized to create a problem and sell you the solution. And it's the same thing with a lot of people um, saying like, let's just pay to convenience. Yeah, but they're, they're inconveniencing you on purpose to begin with. That's the entire problem I have. And my favorite game, Path of Exile started doing this. They started having new leagues come out with more stuff dropping. And then they started creating stash tabs to put the new league content in. And we were like, hold up. 
that's kind of fucked, isn't it? Stop creating problems and selling us the solution. And they got a lot of backlash for this. And they stopped doing it, thankfully. But it's very important, in my opinion, to be incredibly vocal about these things. There, there's so many things like this in the game. So paired by all of these things, the speed up crafts and being able to buy things for money. Like in this game, you can very clearly buy things for money. Now, I'm not trying to say that it's necessary. I'm not trying to say that you won't have a good experience without spending a lot of money. A lot of people in my chat were saying they're playing completely free to play or with only the stash tabs and that they felt using money is stupid. However, I really don't like when things like that are in the game. It actively makes the developers make a worse game and I hate it when the game is always trying to nickel and dime me. But the most important thing to me is that everybody has the same gameplay experience. Whether you live in a poorer country where it's a huge chunk of your salary or where you live in Norway, where you're like, ha ha, this isn't even half a pizza, bro. I'm rich. So that I, I just, real life is too pay to win already. I don't think I talked enough about gear, actually. Uh, I found my first unique today. It was neat. They're pretty rare. There's also a free um, unique tab where you can store all your uniques. The gear is pretty interesting. It's not like boring ARPGs where there's like a plus and an up arrow. The gear is like, you have to figure out what's good for your build. So I, I thought the gear was quite good. And there is a auto flask system that you can like uh, configure. So I've set my HP flask to auto at 70% and then my mana to auto at 30%. And I don't have my Quicksilver autoing. One thing I saw a lot in the Steam comments and stuff where people are like, oh, it installs a virus on your computer and things like that. They're talking about the uh, anti-cheat rootkit, but this is similar to things like Valorant and PUBG and a lot of other games like that does the same thing. It doesn't uninstall with the game at the moment, but the developers did apparently address that and said they're making an uninstaller for it. I feel like I would be a hypocrite because I installed Valorant, I installed PUBG. I didn't really have a problem with it there, so I'd feel like a hypocrite if I started kicking up a fuss about it now. I'm overly devastated. I'm overly devastated because the game itself is honestly quite decent, but the monetization options are awful. Literally awful. It's not the kind of game that I would want to play long term. I would not recommend the game to anyone because I don't want to recommend anything with this bad and heavy monetization to anyone. I would love to hear what you guys think. What do you guys think about the game review? What do you guys think about the game? Uh, it certainly made me appreciate Path of Exile a lot more. It's not really the game I'm hating on. And when I talked about it today on stream as well, people are like, it seems like you're saying the game's pretty decent and the month I say, or like everything around the game is awful. And yeah, I kind of feel like that. That's all I had to say. Thanks for watching. Sub if you like the video, but more importantly, try to spend Less money than I do. I spend zero. Try to die less than I do. Thanks!